Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello and thanks for checking in. This is gonna be my build guide for my Arcane Archer Falconer, the Kaida 2023. I will begin in the character planner. Here you can more easily see my starting stats and my level progression and uh, in what level I took which feet. I'll go over the gear more in detail in the video, but uh, you can see here I'm wearing a three-piece Dreadstalker set, a five-piece Isle of Dread Profane set, Vulcor's Might two-piece, and an augment set of your choice. Uh, I chose uh, Wisdom. It could also be MR cap for defense or armor piercing for offense. For filigrees, I have the spines of the Manticore with the raid filigrees. Wreath of Flame again with the raid filigrees, so this is basically for free. Crackshot Negotiator 3 piece for the ranged power. And Wild Hunter 2 piece again for ranged power. My filigrees are stacked up with ranged power and one imbue dice. I will show you later in the video uh, my sentient weapon so you can uh, really see it. These are my skills. Uh, I have the rogue skills and uh, use magic device, diplomacy, heal and uh, spellcraft and also a little bit in jump. My enhancement trees are, uh, I am a half elf. Uh, I chose that because they have access to the uh, racial variant of arcane archer. And they also have a 20% ranged power boost here in the cores. I then took uh, 41 in uh, Arcane Archer for the capstone and for some tier 5s with Slaying Arrow. <coughs> Deepwood Stalker for Sniper Shot and also a 30% ranged power boost. And the rest in falconry for the bird attacks and wisdom to damage and trance and helplessness. Let us look at the rotation and see why I chose sniper shot with the ranger or dark hunter levels. I use hunt's end to fuel my active shots and I use Arrow of Slaying because it's still the best. I also use Sniper Shot because it's a close second and I sprinkle in some mini shots. I will switch to my boosting bow Whenever I use action boost or uncanny dodge, I gain a bonus to ranged power. So I'm gonna keep that up along with the other little buffs like uh, rogue, past life and uh, the combat trance. I will do a full cycle from Uncanny Dodge until it goes off cooldown again and I'll use Sniper Shot before a Hunt's End Slaying Arrow and I'll follow any attacks with a Mini Shot. The Mini Shot charges decreases but it uh, kinda hangs in there. <laughs> Last. It's 
For years my goal was to have the meanest slaying arrows, but it's only been this past past year I've thought about putting it into an actual rotation, and sniper shot works great for that. Let us say I do a boosted slaying arrow for 200,000, then 8 seconds later I can do a boosted sniper shot for 100,000. Another 8 seconds later, another boosted sniper shot for 100,000. And then 8 seconds later again the cycle repeats with a boosted slaying arrow for 200,000, roughly speaking. That is also why I went with ranged power boost over say something like a haste boost. Because uh, my cycle is limited uh, to the hunt's end and the active shots uh, every 8 seconds. There is uncanny dodge again, so that is full cycle. Uh, my trances uh, got used up, but in actual gameplay you regain those on a trinity roll against mobs, so uh, you kind of refresh them as you go. Uh, the mini shot charges held up. Uh, I believe I got uh, 12 rounds of mini shot off, so that's also uh, 12 active attacks in this cycle. I'm just gonna do some lazy crits on the dummy. Hansen followed by an active shot. First up sniper. There was a 20, a times 3 double shot for 72,000 per arrow. I have 138 double shot, so about one third of the time it should be a triple hit. There was another 20, a times 3 double, ho double shot again, for 117,000 per arrow. And this shows why I like uh, slaying arrow, because it's just so much better, even though the cooldown is longer. The build is not only DPS, I also have some crowd control in the form of bird attacks and paralyzing arrows. I need to re-gear a bit for paralyzing arrows, uh, so I lose out on some damage. But it can really help in a pinch when there's no caster around. I cannot paralyze a everything. Uh, it's sort of like uh, medium. <laughs> it's not like a super high uh, 
enchantment DC, but uh, the beast known as Scythe Maw has been terrorizing this part of the bamboo grove. It's time to hunt him down. I'm pretty satisfied, and in all hail the king, it works wonders. As I stand here looking at the illicit sky, I want to talk about stats and gear. As you can see I am wisdom based, with a decent dex and a healthy con. I have 141 double shot with the, my new ring. So it's up a bit. And I also have 333 ranged power unbuffed on the ship. My saves are my weak point, but uh, so far I haven't had uh, any serious issues. Uh, they seem to hold up. For gear, uh, let's start uh, with some of my sets. Uh, Vulcor's might set, the gloves are just basic, uh, I plan to slot them with uh, Vecna, Unleashed, Augments, uh, Higher Vitality, and also Action Boost plus 3 charges. It goes with Gem of Many Facets, which I upgraded with Insightful Accuracy, Tendon Slice, and healing law and I put a draconic soul gem in the yellow slot here is my uh, dreadstalker set my armor and my helmet I made the helmet my constitution item and the cloak. I found myself missing insightful seeker and also insightful deception so it had to be this cloak. Uh, I have a craftable version but uh, in order to fit those uh, bonuses in I had to go with the named cloak. It is also my dexterity item. Then we can see uh, the Dread Isle Curse set. Uh, I'm going with Osfell Lightning Boots for the electric spell power because I use the electric arrows. My artifact, also part of the Dread Isle's Curse. This is my wisdom item. And I have the braces here. And the necklace for even more spell power. Slotted with Purpura's Memento. Pomura's Memento. <laughs> for uh, some extra crit chance. And here I have a placeholder belt. It is my intention to swap it with Lindel's Mighty Belt for the insightful sheltering. But so far I'm using this. It's, a, it's an okay substitute. And then I have my uh, three-piece Wisdom Augment set, which are slotted into these goggles. And my new ring.
and my sentient bow. Here you can see my filigrees also. Uh, I've loaded it up with ranged power. It's more or less all ranged power, except for one attack and damage and one imbue dice. I also slotted it with a ruby of devotion 139 to get workable heals outside of combat, even in Reaper. I'm using uh, different augment sets as well. Um, here is my paralyzing set, which I slotted with esoterica augments, also in goggles, ring, and bow. And then I also have some uh, trapping items. This time with piercing mindset bonus for higher intelligence. Also goggles, ring, and a bow. And I'm using a few more trapping pieces like uh, legendary green steel and ventilated braces and treasure hunter spyglass. We can take a look at my spell powers. I have uh, 609 positive and 615 electric. The positive has a 32 spell critical chance, so it uh, crits uh, a great deal. And it crits for 15% more spell critical damage. So, we are back where we started, and this has been my build review for my Arcane Archer Falconer. I think I forgot to include uh, my Epic Destinies, but you can find that information in my build post on the DDO forums. I will try to keep it updated, but as of now, this video is the most current version. If I didn't scare you away, and if you're looking for a high DPS archer with backup crowd control, this is the build for you. I went wisdom based uh, to get workable uh, bird attacks from falconry and the synergy is really great. The damage is also uh, quite decent uh, with wisdom to hidden damage. I have been playing this build for many years and refined it along the way, but I'm not sure how much more I can refine it. <laughs> it's uh, it's really uh, it's quite intricate. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, big or small, don't hesitate to ask. I'll catch you in the next one.